three notes in our last of our bonding unit. And we're going to finally talk more about covalent compounds and covalent bonds, which we've mentioned, but we haven't really spent time on. So, covalent compounds form because of covalent bonds forming. A covalent bond is a bond that results between non-metallic elements, so two non-metals, that are going to share electrons. And what results is a molecule. A molecule is only supposed to be used when we're referring to two or more elements that are covalently bonded. So NaCl, sodium chloride, that's not a molecule. H2O, water is, because it's hydrogen and oxygen that are covalently bonded together. So that's something to keep in mind to be a little bit more precise with our language. Covalent bonds either become are single, double, or triple. So a single bond forms when only two electrons are shared. A double bond forms when four electrons are shared. So what do you think a triple bond is? Six electrons shared. All right, let's talk about each one of these. And I want to show you with a drawing of an example of a covalent compound that uses each type of bond. So a single bond is, again, two electrons shared, and we show it as a dash in our drawing. So we're going to go back to concept one where we learned about electron dot diagrams, and we've only used them so far to show ionic bonds, but now we're going to use them to show covalent bonds. So first example, let's show the compound H2, which is hydrogen gas. So, you would draw your electron dot diagrams for the elements, so hydrogen, but it says there's two of them. And instead of showing an arrow going from one to the other, we're going to use a circle around the electrons to show that they share. Then, you just rewrite and replace the circle with a dash to show that that dash represents the two shared electrons. Okay? When you're in my class, I want you to draw both things with the circle and the dash so I know you really understand. All right, another example, H2O, water. We've got oxygen, and then it says two hydrogens. All right, so those will share. The free ones will share, not the ones in pairs, the free ones. And those will share. Now again, just rewrite, and this just becomes a dash. So you have your oxygen in the middle with two pairs of electrons, just like so. That circle becomes a dash to a hydrogen. This circle becomes a dash to a hydrogen, just like we see here. Now, when you get to chemistry, you'll learn more about like bond angles and all that jazz. I'm not getting into that with y'all. We're just going to do these basics for now. So don't worry about how you know I angled mine, and you may have had your sticking out to the side. Don't worry about that for now. All right, let's try a double bond. Double bond is when four electrons or two pairs of electrons are shared. So let's look at oxygen gas, O2. All right, so there's one oxygen and there's a second oxygen. You may be saying, how did I end up with those individual ones right next to each other? Because if you went one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it would have um, worked out that way. But I just did it because I want to make it easier for myself. So that when I circle them to show that these will share and these will share, they're just right next to each other. All right, so same thing. Draw exactly what you just did. Just now you have dashes instead of circles. So there's my oxygen with two, a pair and a pair. A pair and a pair. Here's my oxygen with a pair and a pair. A pair and a pair. And then the two circles just became two dashes to represent the double bond. All right, a little bit more complicated. Carbon dioxide. We've got a carbon. It has four valence electrons. Oxygen is in group 16. It has six. So those will share and those will share. These will share and these will share. And I end up with this. Now, the way you'll always know if you did it right is that everybody has access to eight electrons. So if I was to put my hand and cover up this, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight that it needs. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Look over here, oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Carbon, two, four, six, eight. Everybody's able to touch, they're sharing eight electrons um, so that they all can be stable. All right, triple bond, six electrons or three pairs are shared. So, example, nitrogen gas. 
This makes up like over three quarters of the atmosphere. You got nitrogen and nitrogen. Those will share, those will share, and those will share. So I just end up with my nitrogens with three bonds, two, four, six between them. So they all, they both have access to eight. Okay, we are going to practice this a lot in class, but for now I'm going to keep moving forward. So covalent compounds that form from these kinds of bonds have some properties to, about them. They're all made of nonmetals that share electrons in those covalent bonds. They are molecules that can be solid, liquid, or gas in terms of the state that they're in. They have really low melting and boiling points, and they cannot conduct electricity when they're dissolved in water. This is different from ionic compounds, which result from ionic bonds that we learned about in concept two. Those are made of positive metallic ions usually and negative non-metallic ions after a metal has transferred its electrons to the non-metal. When they form, they make these regular repeating patterns called crystals. So they almost all ionic compounds are solids. They have super high melting and boiling points. And if you dissolve them in water, they actually can conduct electricity, which is pretty cool. All right. Last thing we need to learn about covalent, which we already learned about ionic um, compounds, is the naming. And for luckily, it's way easier. Um, so you'll like it a lot. So how to determine the name for a covalent compound? If I give you a formula, how do you know its name? First, you name the first element with a prefix to indicate how many there are. The only exception is if there's only one, we don't use mono on the first element. And then you name the second element with prefix to indicate how many and you add your IDE ending. So we're just using prefixes and the ID ending. No crisscross applesauce, none of that, because they're not, there's no charge because they're not giving and taking. They're sharing. So you can't use the oxidation numbers like we did with ionic. All right, so here are the prefixes to know. Mono for one, di for two, tri three, tetra four, penta five, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. All right, so here's an example. Name the compound P2O5. Y'all, there's no crisscrossing in this. There's no simplifying, none of that. You just write it as is. So there's two phosphoruses, so that's diphosphorus, and there's five oxygen, so penta oxide. Because remember, we still do the IDE ending. That's it. It's really that simple. All right, so try it. Name these five, and then press play to see the answers. All right, notice in numbers one, three, and four, Four, the first element, there's only one of them. You don't write monocarbon because you remember that's our one exception is you don't watch um, or you don't include mono for the first one. You do include it though for the second one. So that's the only tricky part. All right, last thing, let's go the other direction. So if I give you the name, can you figure out the formula? This is so easy, you're gonna love it. All you do is use prefixes to determine the subscripts and you don't crisscross, and you don't simplify. That's it. So what's the formula for dichlorine monoxide? Well, di is 2, chlorine is for Cl, mono is 1, oxides referring to oxygen. So 2 chlorines, 1 oxygen, Cl2O. It's that simple. I love it. All right, now pause, practice these five, and then press play to check your answers. Notice, no reducing for covalent. Do not reduce that. All right, now we're going to practice. 